Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another, well, not really repair video for you, but this may be one of those things that uh, could be fun, that could yield some nice results. Oftentimes I've said in the past about AC work that it's not necessarily for the DIY, namely because of the specialized equipment that's often involved and the experience and the complexity of the system and how it works in general. It takes quite a bit uh, to work on AC. In addition, often it requires licensing just to handle the refrigerant and that type of thing, and there's environmental concerns as well. So this is a lot to be considered as far as AC work is concerned, and I've always cautioned people that have approached me about these types of things. However, for today's video, this is something I give you full permission to do, because it does not involve opening the system at all, but it may also increase the performance of your AC system. Now this suggestion comes to me from a college man, AKA Paul Krasick, over on my website. He's a forum moderator of mine and also happens to work in the HVAC industry. And one of the things he asked me about, he said, uh, have you ever cleaned a condenser? And I said, no, I haven't. He says, well, you might be surprised at the kind of stuff that comes out and it does help increase the efficiency of the system. He says that one of the uh, biggest failures within the AC system is increased head pressures, which cause uh, increased temperatures in the system. Now, I'll put a link in the description to a video that I did about how AC systems work, but basically it's a heat exchanger. It takes the heat from inside the car and brings it outside the car to this thing in front of the radiator that is called the condenser. Uh, in order for that condenser to work efficiently, it has to be able to dissipate the heat that is put into it, like I said, from the passenger compartment out here. And the way it does that, it, uh, just like a radiator, radiates that out into the atmosphere. So if it's clogged, damaged, uh, and doesn't have good airflow, then yes, it could very well decrease the overall efficiency of the AC system. So we're gonna do a little experiment with this. We're gonna clean this out, and we're gonna test the uh, outlet temperature before and after this, just to test the effectiveness of it. This is our weapon of choice. Uh, this is uh, what uh, Paul suggested I use. It's something that's really used on your home AC systems for uh, cleaning out uh, condensers on outdoor things. Uh, it says that it's safe for aluminum and I believe it was brass. Aluminum or copper is what it is safe for. It's biodegradable, so you can use it outside, but you gotta watch it on some paint finishes and things like that. Uh, and we'll talk about that during the uh, application process. Its main ingredient uh, appears to be sodium hydroxide. Um, we'll go over the directions on how to use it, but as far as the actual application, uh, this is what he suggested that I do. And that is to get one of these, uh, well, bug sprayer, slash, just a sprayer assembly. So you can pick these up at a, at a hardware store. But anyway, it's a, it's a pressurized container. And the reason he suggested this is because you could actually sneak through your grill and get in there and to clean the condenser. Now, I've installed this aftermarket grill that makes it somewhat difficult to get in there and also it would make for a very exciting video. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this whole front clip to uh, access the condenser much more easily. In addition, uh, I thought and I asked him, I said, can I just get a spray bottle and do the same thing? And he says, yeah, you can, but he actually recommends using uh, this instead of this but you could just as easily take this and squirt through the inside. Now, one of the warnings on the outside of this uh, says you need to wear gloves and you also need to be in a well ventilated area. So in other words, it's much better to do this outside. Uh, also, if you were doing this uh, above asphalt, um, I would also give that warning because there are some uh, considerations on here about certain roofs that might be an issue. Also, this is designed to eat away grease uh, or petroleum based products. So if you have an asphalt driveway, you might not want to do this over your asphalt driveway. Me, I'm going to do it in the back over some gravel, uh, so I should be okay there. But that's something you really should take into consideration. And I would read through all the warnings and safety concerns on the bottle, even though I'm going to show you how to, how to do it here just to be on the safe side. So why don't we get started by me removing this uh, front clip. Uh, and I'm going to do that first before we do the performance test because obviously that's going to affect the AC performance a little bit because the airflow is going to be a bit different. So I want to make sure to have it as, as accurate as possible of tests that I can come up with. So remove the front clip, we'll do an AC performance test, we'll go out, we'll clean a condenser, come back in, do another test and see how effective it was. Okay, I've already shown uh, removing this front bumper clip a couple of times in a couple of other videos. I'll post links to those in the description, but we're just going to breeze right through this so we can get to cleaning this condenser.
Now that I have the front clip off, we have a much better view of the condenser here. And as you can see, it's suffered a bit of uh, impact damage, shall we say, from uh, 10 years worth of driving down the road. Uh, and these areas up in here are fine because they were behind a protected surface. So the bulk of our cooling is actually done in here. Now there is uh, something of a solution to this. Uh, I have in my hand here uh, what are called fin combs. And these basically fit into these areas and help straighten out all these little aluminum, thing, aluminum uh, extrusions or what have you uh, to help for better airflow. Uh, now this is a painstaking process and whether or not this will be really successful is hard to say. I put links in the description to all this stuff uh, so that you could check it out. But I, I have two different styles here. I have one style where you uh, that has all of the different sizes already there and this also works on radiators by the way. Uh, and I have this other style here uh, that you just put in different attachments and I'm gonna see which one works better uh, and just just go with that. Well, this fin combing idea didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. Uh, it's partly because I, I don't really have one that's just the right size for this condenser. These tools weren't that expensive at all. I actually found that using my pocket screwdriver was a lot more efficient. And I also found out that I kind of don't really have the patience for this. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying it's not a good thing, uh, but I just, I'm, I'm questioning whether or not that the amount of effort that I'm going to expend here is going to really equate to a real return. But I did think of one more thing that we can do while we do our performance test. I'm also going to hook up my gauges so we can actually check the uh, system pressures uh, while uh, we do the test both before and after. So rather than driving myself crazy trying to straighten out all these fins, which will take the rest of the day without a doubt, uh, I'm going to hook up my gauges. Uh, we'll get the thermometer out. We'll do a a system check of how efficiently the system is working now. We'll go out, we'll clean it, we'll come back and check again. Looks like ambient shop temperature is somewhere just above 80 degrees. Quite simply, we are going to start it up. Turn on the AC. We just need the fan on low. AC kicked on. The temp gauge goes in the center vent and we raise uh, the RPMs up to about 2,500. Wow, it actually looks like it's performing pretty well as it is. Uh, it got down to actually a little below, might be like 38 degrees, which is actually really stinking good. But let's go out and check the uh, pressures under the same conditions and see where those are at. All right, well, looking at the pressures, it looks like uh, our peak pressure on the high side goes up to what looks like around 180 and it looks like our low goes down to around 18 which actually is really really good now there's not a lot of humidity today and that will play a factor but so far the system seems to be functioning normally so we'll see if we get any improvements out of cleaning this condenser right well the instructions for our uh, new bright say to mix uh, one part cleaner with with uh, four parts water not to go any lower than one part cleaner to three parts water. Now this has only ever had water in it. If you've had other chemicals or something in it, uh, you might want to make sure you clean it out real well before you use it or choose a different method. All right, here's my four parts water. To one part cleaner.
Let's go clean a condenser. I'm also wearing eye protection, as you can see, just for good measure. Um, and as I said, you don't necessarily have to remove your front clip to do this. You can actually stick this between the uh, fins of your uh, grill in the front of the vehicle, and you'll probably be just fine doing that. All right, so I'm just gonna hose the whole thing down. All right, now as you'll see, it starts to foam uh, when it activates as it starts to clean. Instructions say to wait uh, about 10 minutes. I'm gonna give it at least that uh, while it sits there and, and does its job. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, some of the bubbles have started to die down. Now, one of the things Paul also said about rinsing this out is if you're going to use a hose, don't use the jet spray on it. You want to rinse. So you, you want it to come out in a nice, slow way. You don't want to try to blast through the condenser uh, when you do this. He also mentioned that if you've got a great deal of dirt that comes out when you do this, you might want to do this twice uh, just to be on the safe side. But I'm just going to rinse this out with uh, my hose now. Right, well, we've cleaned it out, and now, well, let's recheck the uh, vent temperatures and see how low we go. We're still roughly about uh, 84 degrees here in the shop today, uh, so that should give us a, a benchmark uh, from before. And last time we went down to about 39 degrees or so, which was actually performing quite well, but we'll see if the uh, cleaning of the condenser added anything to our performance. All right, it looks like it's bottomed out. Well, I'm gonna be honest, for me, it looks like it's performing about the same. However, it may be different for you if, if your condenser is a bit uh, dirtier than mine was. Uh, but it looks like it's coming down to about the same place. And really, I think that's where my system's gonna to top out anyway, because when it's properly charged, it will only go down so far as far as the temperature is concerned before the evaporator starts to ice up. So it's designed to kick off, and that's what I've basically listened for. I listen for when the compressor disengaged. Uh, but it's looking like it's still coming around 38, 39 degrees, which I'm really happy with. Uh, however, once again, on really humid days, this might make more of a difference because it will be able to transfer heat better. Let's check the pressures. That is interesting, okay? Vent temperatures pretty much didn't change. However, the high side pressure has come down. It was about, I would say about 180 before, and now it's down around 120. So it came down about 60 PSI on the high side, which means the system is functioning more efficiently, oddly enough. Uh, so even though the vent temperatures remain the same, which were fine to begin with, it looks like we've brought our high side pressures down considerably. Like I say, 60 PSI is way significant. So I'm, I'm really impressed with what that did. So I, I know that this system will probably work better on days where there's more humidity and there's a higher heat load. That there's, that's some interesting stuff. And all that took was a little bit of cleaning. Let's wrap this up. That was one heck of a result, if I'm honest. Uh, of course, from an HVAC guy. So thank you, Paul, for, for making this suggestion. And I'm glad I was able to share it with you. A couple of high points. Now, uh, the cup that I used to measure everything out with, this is a nine ounce cup. And as you saw, I used uh, four cups of water to one cup of the solution. Uh, and it was good for more than one application. In fact, I did two applications. 
uh, and there was still a little bit left from there. So just to give you a basic idea of how much you're looking at, well, this is all that I used. Now that's kind of a good thing because uh, I will say this stuff does not come cheap. Uh, if I remember right, it was, well, let's put it this way. I'll put the price down in the description, but it's, it, was, it was up there as far as the price goes. I don't know if you can buy it in smaller quantities or not, but you can do this a lot. And if you're doing AC service, you know, this, this can go a long way to, to keep those high side pressures down and, and make the system more efficient. So I'm, I was really surprised by that result just with what a cleaning did. Uh, but this is something that's, that's done as far as periodic maintenance and HVAC and industrial and, and residential applications. In fact, that's what this stuff is for. Uh, but it seemed to work really well in this automotive application. So once again, thank you, Paul, for making this suggestion. One more thing. When you use, uh, like, say, uh, something like this to do the cleaning with, uh, I'm, I worry about this chemical mixing with other chemicals. So you might want to just reserve this one just for doing this work. Uh, rinse it out really well if you're going to use it for something else or rinse it out really well if you've used other things in it because you know you start mixing chemicals together bad things can happen so you know try try to keep that in mind and the other thing is is don't use a jet spray when you're cleaning out the condenser when you're doing the rinse uh, if you could just take the nozzle off and use your finger maybe but it just needs a gentle rinse it does not need uh, any of that high pressure spray because that that could actually bend the fins speaking of the fins I'm going to say fin combs, at least for me, that didn't work out. Uh, and sitting there with a uh, pocket screwdriver actually worked a little bit better. I lost patience. Now, uh, you can see from the results of what I did, the cleaning actually did the work. But, you know, if, if you've got the patience to bend all those fins back, yes, if you will get a bit more efficiency out of it. Is it worth the effort? That's up to you to decide. Me, I'm, I'm happy with just the cleaning. Like I said, this is something that, that the DIYer can do. It does not open the system. Um, once again, beware of blacktop driveways. Uh, also beware of uh, painted surfaces. It does say something about painted surfaces uh, in the instructions. I would just recommend that you read the instructions on the chemical thoroughly before you actually use it. There may be a few things that I missed here. Uh, but as far as the general application of the procedure, covered it. Uh, and we got a result. Uh, vent temperatures didn't change, but high side pressure came down a lot, and that will keep the, the compressor happy, let's, let's say. It, it won't have to work as hot, it won't burn up the lubricant, it will last longer, the system works better. Got a result. Uh, if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about all the amazing features we have at ericthecarguy.com to help you with those issues should you have them. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. I post repair videos every Friday, so stop back and see me on Friday if you're into those. Close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty, but keep your condenser clean. I'll see you next time.